Hi guys and welcome back. Today we'll be building and painting the crew for the Jag Panther and uh, it's a eclectic mix of different manufacturers starting with this figure uh, from Stalingrad which looks very nice and this is the figure that's really on the far left side of the picture uh, the guy with both hands in his pocket so not a huge amount of work to do on this figure. And then we have the commander figure from Evolution and a little bit of work here because his uh, arms should be behind his back and there's some pockets there that uh, aren't the right type of pocket so and his head because uh, he is hatless in the photo so a little bit of work to do on this guy. Then we have a figure from Tank, uh, the chap sitting on the gun barrel. Not a lot of work to do on this figure other than his uh, right arm which is hanging straight down and a different head because he's got the peaked cap uh, rather than the hat that he's got in, in the box here. Then we've got a, a number of figures from Miniart, German tank crew, mainly using the guy, probably his legs or his legs, depends how they look, and this guy again, that arm looks like it might be the right arm for the chap who's sitting on the gun barrel. So we'll just be sort of cannibalising this box for various pieces along the way. Then throw into the mix some German tank crew from Tamiya. And uh, again, probably just picking a, a, a few limbs out at random here. The guy sitting down on the left, I'll use a lot of his parts. And uh, probably a leg or an arm here or there. It's a real um, Frankenstein type approach to this conversion. And lastly, Master Box, which... Um, Upon reflection, I may not use, but it's handy to have there just in case. And the little boy figure who's watching the tank crew, uh, this figure is almost perfect as it is, so I won't be doing much in the way of conversion there. Probably just change the angle of the head slightly. And that's all the kits. So let's get on with uh, the building. So the first figure I put together was that of the small boy. And uh, look, broadly the kit was fine. And there's not a lot of detail in it, but by the same token, the parts were crisp and nicely moulded and they didn't have much in the way of flesh. So it only took a little bit of cleaning up and they came together quite nicely. A little bit of filling required in, in some of the seams, but uh, all in all, you know, very simple, quite small. It's probably about 28 millimeter scale, so like a little wargaming figure, which is a bit fiddly to put the arms and legs together. But uh, I think it came up okay and uh, looks very similar to the pose in the in the picture. The next crew member I put together was the um, guy that's sort of leaning on the front of the tank on the right hand side, closest to the boy. That was basically one of the Tamiya kits pretty much straight out of the box, but uh, took an arm from one of the master box kits and just needed to change the angle of the hand so it was hanging a little bit more naturally down the side of his leg rather than the way it currently is positioned. So it was just a matter of taking that off and repositioning it with a pin. The pocket on this figure looked a little bit bulky in comparison to the picture, it looked a bit flatter. So I just did a little bit of work to reduce that so it wasn't as prominent. So I had originally thought that I'd pin the hand, but there's quite a lot of wrist to play with, so I thought it might be better if I used that to have it disappearing up the sleeve. So I just trimmed it down a little bit to um, make sure it would fit. and uh, the. Exacto knife is an incredibly sharp tool, so if you've made kits before, you've cut yourself and you know what it's like. If uh, you haven't, be very careful because they'll they'll carve you up. Just made a, a little hole as a guide with the pin, and uh, wanted to keep it as central as possible, and then gradually enlarge the cavity at the base of the sleeve so that the wrist would fit into it uh, quite comfortably. That just took a few revolutions and again being very careful with the sharpness of the blade and finally got it large enough so that I could get a screw and my pin vise isn't large enough for this drill bit so uh, it was a bit hard going just using my fingers. Finally just a little bit of a clean up to make sure that there was a, a nice smooth surface on the inside for the wrist to fit into. It fitted very nicely so that allowed me to get the angle right for the hand. 
so onto the commander figure, and in the photo, both his hands are behind his back, so it was a matter of taking the arms off, and unfortunately just the angle of these arms meant I couldn't just take them off and reposition them. So cutting through it carefully with the little saw on the end of the exacto, and then just cleaning up, and also the pockets, so he's got um, two different pockets on the pants that he's wearing, so just wanted to trim those off, and that was fairly easy. It's a resin kit, so uh, it's pretty crisp, and you just have to be gentle when you're taking things off, and just a little bit of gentle work with the file to, to keep the, f the folds of the, the cloth in, intact. So just um, gently carve those off, and in fact you'll notice later on in the painting video actually that uh, I forgot a pocket and uh, had to put that on after I'd already got most of the paint on, which was no big deal, but it just suddenly... Um, struck me when I was looking at the photo on the computer monitor. I could see it a little bit more clearly, and I said, oh, I've lost a pocket, and uh, also both sets of trousers on this guy and the other guy weren't tucked into the boots in the photo, so I had to do a little bit of remedial work there. So I found a, a nice head and um, put that on and actually glued it in place, but uh, in getting some feedback from my family members, we... Uh, we reached a conclusion that his head was way too small, so that also will change later on in the painting video. So it was just a matter of getting the right position for the hands, and I wanted to use the lower part of the arm and the hand as the fixing point on the small of his back, and I was pretty careful with the measuring of that positioning of it, and did a few trial runs just with a little bit of blue tech to make sure they were sitting in the right place. I think the good thing about figures is they're very forgiving because they're organic, so there's not a lot of straight lines, and it allows you to um, have a little bit of flexibility in where you're at. So it's just a matter of bridging the gap now between the arms and the shoulders, and um, building that up with some milliput. Just use some wire, uh, I think it's one mil, one and a half mil wire, so it's reasonably firm but can be bent into shape. So we'll go through some of the other parts of the build with the other figures and then get back to the point where all of the um, sculpting is required to, to finish. So this is the seated figure on the uh, front right of the tank and um, using the Tamiya figure which is basically a seated figure but didn't have the right angle for the legs coming together. So it just again required a little bit of carving away and just you know constantly testing and refitting to make sure it's right. And uh, once I was happy with that, just about fixing it together. So the traditional thing that I do is just with the pin vise drill a little hole and just use a small piece of wire super glued in and that always seems to be really effective. In, in fact, the only time I've ever come on wrong is if I've been lazy and I haven't done it and invariably they're the figures I drop and they're the bits that fall off so I tend to wire and glue everything um, because I'm also clumsy. Just a little tip here, so sometimes when you put the wire in one half how do you find where the um, opposite hole has to be? I just put a little dot of paint on the end of the actual wire and fix it into one side and then just bring the two halves together as close to um, where I want them to be as a final product and give it a bit of a push and that'll leave a, a mark on the opposite side. It's not always perfect, especially if you're wobbly, but it'll give you a pretty good gauge and I just aim for the centre of that mark and um, nine times out of ten it seems to work really well and uh, they usually line up pretty much spot on. So the only reason I'm really showing this is so you can see the magnitude of the gap that was left to get the right angle for the leg, so the knees distance apart. So there's quite a lot of fill required for the back of that part of the figure.
And the torso also had the head with just the, um, the cap on, without the peak cap. And uh, so the head had to come off. You need to be really careful that you don't cut into the collar or the uniform around it. So always, always do a good check about that. I don't think it matters if you leave a bit behind. It's better to leave a bit behind that you can then slowly take away carefully so you don't damage the rest of the part that you need than uh, lop it all off in one hit. Just clear the cavity out for the Hornet figure they come with next. So it's just a matter of uh, paring that down a little bit so it fits. When I do the hollowing out, I always try and like to leave a little bit of plastic there to represent the shirt collar at the very least around all around the neck and get the neck actually into the into the shirt just so it looks a little bit more realistic rather than just sitting on top of it. So this is a figure sitting on top of the gun barrel and again it's a it's a bit of a hybrid of different parts and uh, pinning them all together all, along the way because there's gaps in, in every join so this will require a little bit of filling to complete it but not too much sculpting it's more just the, the filling of the gaps to make sure that it looks crisp. I have to build up the back flap of the right side of the jacket on, on this figure. And so largely into the, the filling and the sculpting now, and uh, I just use the normal Milliput two-part um, epoxy uh, resin, I guess. And uh, I find it goes on quite well if you use a toothpick. It doesn't seem to stick to the wood too much, and really it's just a case of getting it in there. And then I use the needle tool, and I've also found that if you wet the end of the needle tool, it, um, it works much better in terms of smoothing things out. And look, I'm a, I'm a terrible fiddler, so I played with this for ages and ages just um, trying to get it really smooth I don't like those join lines you see between arms and shoulders so I, I always try and fill them in uh, as smoothly as possible the commander figure was a bit more work getting the arms in place and, and having to build the pockets uh, on his trousers as well and also his um, blouse which uh, in the photo is sort of like a double breasted fold over affair and uh, in all honesty I could not find anything that looked like that on the internet but uh, it's certainly what it looks like in the picture so to satisfy myself I've decided that he's um, a slightly eccentric tank commander and he's had his own jacket made by his tailor hence I've given myself a license to do, give it a little bit of different color and design uh, it looks like it looks in the picture but as I said I don't think I've ever actually seen I couldn't find anything on uh, online that looked remotely like it so again, just taking a, a little bit of care and getting uh, the shape, the overall shape right, and just removing any excess along the way, and then constantly just packing it in and, and making sure it all starts to blend into the plastic or the resin parts of the kit. And then again, just using the wet tip on the needle tool to start smoothing things over and gradually working some seams and creases in uh, to try and again sort of match the existing seams and creases on the kit. This uh, guy with his hands in his pockets didn't really require a lot, just needed a belt, and that was very straightforward and not worth showing. Uh, and then a tiny little belt buckle, which uh, I rolled out some milliput as flat as I could get it, with the vague hope that I could then actually get it off the cutting board, and worked my way through, just removing that till I was left with the tiny little piece. And uh, I think it came out okay, but uh, very tiny, so very hard to get a lot of detail.
In all honesty, I was quite surprised I got it off the board. And really just to show you the last two figures, just um, mainly just getting it all packed in and letting that dry, not wanting to put too much in and trying and sculpt because I think that, that gives you some problems. So packed it up to fill it and then let that dry overnight and then came back and did the final sculpting. So I think that's probably enough of, of all of that. So just the last uh, minute or so of this, we'll have a look at the completed figures prior to priming. The next video, which will be the painting and weathering, um, will be out pretty soon after this. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, appreciate your views and your comments and your subscriptions and um, look forward to uh, getting some comments and uh, feedback. Thanks very much.